have to go through because obviously it's an amending ordinance so it does have to go to the full city council uh, I assume that it has to go to plum I, I don't know whether it has to go to CPC uh, we, we have to you know I wouldn't need to look at those things to determine that and also my colleague uh, yes, if, um, if I may inter interject here um, I think we're getting a little far afield of what's agendized today what you're proposing um, is beyond what was agendized so to comply with the Brown Act and the public notice, you would have to agendize what you're proposing to do at a different meeting. No, I mean, that's the purpose of the motion no, that we the submitted. Purpose, the purpose of what was agendized today are the administrative rules that pertain to the ordinance that was already passed. What you're proposing to do is to introduce a motion to amend the ordinance that goes into effect on Saturday. Right, right. That's so what we're trying to cure is, is, is what, what, what... You're trying to carve out an, an no, exception. No, no, let me, let me finish. We please. have... Can Let me finish, please. We're trying to cure what was, was a failure to, to put this on, but I, I will suggest to you that, and related matters, and I think this is intimately related, uh, having uh, been there, that this would fall within the related matters. Well, I would respectfully disagree, because the but whole... This is not well, a related if, if I may, matter? If I may finish. Tell me I why this isn't a related matter. Let's, let's just... If I may, yeah, if please, I may. Please. the whole purpose of the notice requirement is to give the public an opportunity to appear so that they can follow the subject and discuss it and raise issues. Hmm? But what you're proposing to do exceeds what was described in the agenda, which is to talk about the administrative rules. So tell me to, why this is not fair, a related to, matter. To be fair, I think I just want you to tell me why I this isn't a related matter. It's related, but it's not closely related to what was described oh. on the agenda. Yeah, so okay. I think it would be best to agendize what you're proposing to do at the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, can, Councilman, can if, I may, if I may intervene, the, the motion that, that you prepare with the directives, and I think Mr. Weiser seconded it, is pending before Plum. A mechanism that you can use is waive that motion out of Plum and uh, send it straight to the council. It'll be before the council agenda. Let the council adopt it, and that is the mechanism to give the city attorney the instruction. So the uh, item number 7F is not before us today in this No, committee? it's not, Councilman. What's I thought before, that's the purpose of this committee today. No, right? today is the administrative rules. Those motions, the, a litany of motions that were submitted uh, are not before today's agenda. They're still pending in plumb. So, I wasn't aware of that. I thought we were taking them all in today with the uh, no, because agenda I'm, today. I, th I think um, today is merely the, the cultural affairs uh, report on the administrative no, I, rules. I, well, then I, I would concur with the city attorney then, and we would no, waive this, because this is not before the committee today. I thought it was. Um, but we would have to waive that. You, you would waive it out of plumb. You could, if, you, if the council president agrees, perhaps you can have it on, on the council agenda this Friday. Let the council adopt that motion, and you can verbally amend it on the floor and include Mr. Price as part of the, that directive, CD9. So it'll be CD9, 1, and 14, and city attorney at that point would have the, the instruction to do the, amend, the amendments to the ordinance that becomes effective on Saturday. That sounds like a way forward to me. Uh, no. Good Friday. No? Well, look, if, if, if we, if we memorialize But Mr. Cedillo, if, memorial, if we memorialize this on Friday and it goes into effect on Saturday as intended, exempting 1, 9, and 14, I think we're in business. Well, let, let me just clarify. The ordinance that has already been adopted will go into effect. Mm -hmm. Any amending ordinance will only go into effect after it's been adopted and right. signed by the mayor. But, because it's, it, it will be a standalone motion. So, I mean, a standalone ordinance, two separate ordinances. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, then from the CLA's perspective, how quickly could that be done if, if, we, if this does if come to council on Friday? At that point, it, 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 the city attorney would have to tell you what their, uh, I don't know what, what timeline they will use to report, to prepare, in essence, a new ordinance that would carve out CD1, CD14, and CD9. Mm -hmm. So they have to tell you what their deadline is. Mm -hmm. And there's also notification issues as mm -hmm. far as posting the, uh, you know, the ordinance and whatnot. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that Mr. Cedillo and Mr. Huiz are, are exactly accurate that the intent of the city council was to exempt oh, 1 and 14. Let me, let me tell you, in the notice uh, here, there's also no doubt that we're here to discuss the creation of new original art murals and the preservation of existing art murals 
on private property. That's the notice. That's the subject matter notice, and that's the subject matter we're discussing here. But, but it's clear. But, but, it's evident. Its words could not be any clearer. And also, Councilman, another wrinkle to that um, is that if you look at the agenda, there's an associated council file with it. The, count, the, the motion that you did and Mr. Weezer did is part of another file. I understand that. So. That is, as they would say, a distinction without a difference for this discussion. With all due respect. So let me ask just administratively then, we move forward on, on this item. We resolve this item. We move forward. Um, and you know we put this item to rest, and then we're in business for the mural ordinance being going into effect this Saturday. We then do the process as described, and we were, are able to bring the amendment of the ordinance to the full city council on Friday. Um, in anyone's experience, what's the world record in terms of getting an adopted, posted, signed by the mayor, and that's and I'm looking to you to tell me the fastest out. way we can get this done. The as far as giving the directive, you can do that directive on Friday, assuming the council president uh, places the motion before the council. As far as preparing the actual ordinance, that I will refer to the city attorney who has to prepare it. So that's outside of our control. Mr. Fong, would you care to comment? Yes. I, the actual ordinance itself, it probably won't be that complicated, but I do have to work with the planning department and I have to work with staffs of CD1 and CD14, and we have to comply with all of the requirements of the code for uh, an amending ordinance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to sit down and figure out scheduling and that sort of thing. So, of course, we would do this as urgently as we can, but we have to respect the existing process. That's all I'm saying. And as I stand here now, I don't think I can give you a set date when this will be done. Yes, but we want something to compare it to six months. So it's less than six months. Well, I would hope so, but I don't have, com I individually do not have complete control over the process is what I'm telling you. Yeah. All right. Uh, let, let's, let's move on. Uh, unless there are, I, I mean, I think we have a way forward. I think that we can um, maybe do some of this referral wise get to the bottom of it get to get it to council on friday um, get the carve outs and then expedite the amending ordinance so that and, and then and then get a date certain require uh, a date certain once we've figured out some of these details is, is that fair my colleagues if we if we do if we do it that way i i think that's about the only option we're left with at this moment on the table but well, you're asking a different question. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to proceed that way. Okay. All right. It's, a different, it's an answer to a different okay. question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, having, having said that, um, thank you, thank you uh, Mr. Rothman, Mr. Fong. Having said that, I have some suggestions uh, on the administrative rules. Fairly minor, but I have some suggestions that I would love to see incorporated without objection of my colleagues. Um, and, and that is in the um, administrative rule number three, according to my document, applicants who place a mural on a lot with two or more residential units are required to notify the lot's adjoining neighbors, the app applicable community council, homeowners association, or block club. In my district, there are several improvement associations. They're not called community councils nor neighborhood councils, nor home, their, their improvement associations. Could we add that term, improvement associations, to that administrative line? The other is in relation to maintenance, and the last sentence of, of the fourth item, where it says the individual providing maintenance is required to apply an anti-graffiti coating to the mural. I would I respectfully request that it, it uh, be modified to read, <clears throat> excuse me, the individual providing maintenance is required to apply an anti graffiti coating immediately upon completion of the mural. So it's more specified. And I'm not asking for more oversight. I'm not asking to, you know, for inspectors to go out there just to put the, the, the burden on the, the artist and the business that make the agreement. Um, are there any objections to refining those rules? 
Hearing none, uh, let's move forward with that. Um, I, I think we're done with item one. Councilman, so, yes. so your action, uh, to be clear, you're adopting the administrative rules as, uh, as amended. As amended, thank you. We're adopting the administrative rules as amended. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Seeing as there are no in, uh, objections, um, they are adopted. Thank you. And, and let me just say, we will move forward on the uh, amending ordinance. Um, okay, we will move on to item number two of the agenda. Which is now a standalone uh, arts committee meeting. Okay. Item number two, this one has only been referred to the um, Arts Parks, Health, Aging, and River Committee for consideration today. This is a motion, Wezar O'Farrell Cedillo, relative to instructing the DCA with the assistance of the City Planning Department, Department of Building and Safety, and CAO, in consultation with the City Attorney to report with recommendations and accompanying ordinance to update the arts development fee ordinance to update the amounts collected and the process for collecting and dispersing fund as well as recommendations for expanding the types of projects generating arts development fees and appropriate credits and exemptions. This matter has also been referred to the Budget and Finance Committee. All right, and this is really only amending the motion to include the CLA and instruct the CLA to report uh, to the committee within 45 days. That's all this is about. So having said that, do we need to hear from the CLA or the Cultural Affairs? I just ask that. I don't think that we do either. Uh, this is amending the original motion uh, that my colleagues Sedio and Huisar and I uh, introduced um, instructing an update on the arts fee to include the CLA. Seeing as there are no objections, shall we call it so moved and adopt? Moved. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Thank you all. That's it. Thank you. So we are now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir.